RMJ movie reviews back again. Looking grimy and gritty with the bandana and the five o'clock shadow jumping off with an on the fly movie review of Jewel's new film <laughs> Arrival, starring Amy Adams, Forrest Whitaker, and Jeremy Renner. Uh, I'm a big fan of this guy's work. Uh, I loved Prisoners. Prisoners is my favorite out of the movies that I've seen in his. And I, I've seen all his movies, the ones that are at least released here in the States. Prisoners is my favorite. I just think that movie is the greatest. Uh, Sicario, I like. Uh, flawed, but I still like it. Enemy, Enemy was, Enemy was okay. It was all right. I mean, I kind of, I don't know. It was okay. And um, this film here, kind of more for me personally, I've been hearing great reviews and all that, but for me personally, this falls more into the category of that enemy category, which is kind of like my overall feeling is kind of here nor there. I don't necessarily really love it. I don't hate it. I, it just kind of, for me personally, it just kind of landed as okay. Um kind of the, the issue that I had with uh, Enemy is the same issue I have here with Arrival. It basically just tells the story of uh, some aliens that come down from Earth in these weird shell-looking ships. And the, mil the military enlists uh, Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner um, to, to try to interpret uh, what their intentions are here. And thus tells the story of Arrival. And not The Arrival starring Charlie Sheen. But Arrival. Um, just Arrival. Um, so, you know, I, I thought the film was okay. What I always really loved about this guy's movies. And I'm sorry I kind of screwed up his... I didn't even say his name. But I screwed it up is because I can't really quite pronounce it. But those of you in the comments section can write it the way it's supposed to be said. But uh, what I love about his movies is how he really... I love his camera work. I, I, there's two things I particularly love. I love his his how he really tells the film. He uses visual storytelling cues. You know what I mean? And I love how, again, you know, it doesn't have to be, oh, uh, I'm an alcoholic now because my grandfather died in these big, long, you know, uh, the accountant uh, J.K. Simmons monologues. You know, it's more telling the story visually showing and that's how you follow the story and he carries over a lot of the stuff that he did in sicario and enemy and especially a lot in prisoners I, there's one shot in particular uh, in prisoners that i remember is the shot where uh it's right before they find out the girls got kidnapped at thanksgiving and there's like a close-up of hugh jackman's house and it kind of slowly goes in and there's like a tree in front of there and it kind of slowly goes like that you know how Michael Bay does the dolly shot in every shot of his movie? Well, for this guy, that's his shot. He usually is going in like that or he's coming out like that. And I love that. He really just lets his stories breathe. He shoots the film wide and he just he just lets the actors act. And they're not like acting. You know what I'm saying? They're not doing the, the Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Thou Shall Strike Down type of monologues, which that's fun, too. But the actors are really just being present and and just being staying in the moment. You know, they're, they're really they're in the moment. And they're breathing, living these characters and the, the film, the, the, the camera work. It just kind of lets it sit there. And again, the cinematography I like, too, because he always uses kind of the same stuff he used in prisoners with kind of those those kind of dark brownish kind of things. He did a lot of, he really did it in Sicario even more carries over a lot of that here. Um, only difference with this film is as in prison, the, the other films that I mentioned, prisoners, Sicario and enemy were all very dark films, uh, in terms of just tone and nature, but the story, um, this here, this here is really more, um, I don't want to use the word deceptive. It's not deceptive, but it, it kind of leaves you a little bit in suspense as to what's going on. So you can feel how the characters feel like, are these guys hostile? What's going on here? And I will say a lot of the suspense that was in prisoners and Sicario, uh, there's, there's a, there's a lot of that here. Cause there's some things where Amy Adams is, you know, talking with the alien. I will say when you see the aliens, um, 
you know, it's not going to set the world on fire. It's not the xenomorph or anything like that. But even still, it, it, it's still really icky and creepy looking to me. And there's uh, kind of a couple gags in here that he that he used in Enemy. Uh, in particular, uh, right before the closing credits of Enemy, where Jake Gyllenhaal walks around the corner and that big spider was in the room. He does a little bit. He does a little bit of those kind of tricks here. Um, and these aliens look really creepy, but, uh, they're, they're no more near, they're nowhere, they're nowhere near as violent as the Xenomorph or, uh, some other, or even Independence Day, you know, one or two. But, um, you know, I, I love the way he tells his story. I love the way he shoots. And of course, the same guy scored this movie that scored Sicario and uh, Prisoners. I'm not sure who scored Enemy. I, I can't remember because I've only seen Enemy once and just never went back to it again. But that dude just, uh, I mean, his music. In, in particular, the score for Sicario was was phenomenal. I, I mean, the score for Sicario was better than the movie itself. I mean, that that's one of the great, I love that score. I'm going to buy that soundtrack. I actually digressing. I actually saw in a YouTube review where they were like, well, you know, you wouldn't want to ride in the car listening to Sicario. I love that soundtrack. Um, I played it in my car one time and you could just hear when it goes do, do, do. Do, 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 It's so suspenseful. But um, he carries over a little of that here. But obviously, this is a different kind of film. So it's not, it doesn't have that darkness to it. But he still does a little bit of, a, a little bit of that he did in Prisoners with the, mm, carries a little bit of that, that over here. Just kind of that unsettling sound that he, that he scores. I can't remember the guy's name, Johanna, 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 Johanna something. But, uh, you know, the score is fantastic. And like I said, it's not as dark. It has those little Sicario prisoners type of sprinkles throughout. But this is a lighter film. So he, he goes a little bit lighter with the music here, which is fitting for this film. Because um, I heard one YouTuber describe this kind of as uh, Contact, Jodie Foster McConaughey movie, uh, Robert Zemeckis' film. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and it was like one other movie he threw in there, but I, I'd kind of more lean towards really those two, Close Encounters of the Third Kind and um, and Contact. That's kind of more along the lines. Um, I, I just will say, ultimately, I, I, I ultimately just, I mean, look, it, it's okay to be artsy, you know, but usually for me, and I'm not saying everything has to be Avatar, everything's got to be Alien or Independence Day. That's not what I'm saying. But it's like usually when you're involving other beings, you you, you just kind of feel like you want a little bit more of a payoff. And ultimately, when everything comes full circle, you know, you're kind of dealing with a little bit of, um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but you're kind of dealing with a little bit of, kind of I, I don't want to say anything because i don't want to ruin it for people but ultimately when you find out uh the big mystery or what's going on i was kind of like oh, okay okay you know um maybe a pinch preachy maybe a pinch just a pinch not a lot but a pinch um you know it tied up it tied up. It didn't, at least for me, I didn't feel like it left any loose threads. Uh, it is kind of cool. The story kind of does do a little bit of the back and forth, past, present, future. Sometimes I got a little bit confused about where we were at in time. But I guess that was honestly the point when, when you kind of find out some stuff about the aliens. So, um... You know, ultimately, when I found out what the aliens were up to, I was just kind of like, you know, huh. I, that's kind of ultimately just how I felt. I was like, huh. But um, it was okay. It was okay for me. Um, it's definitely not something I would rewatch again. Uh, I wouldn't buy it. Buy it, buy it. I wouldn't buy it on Blu-ray. It just. To me, I, I just don't see the rewatchability there, and that's how I feel. So it, it's ultimately okay. Uh, I don't think I can recommend people go out and see it. I say maybe at home on Blu-ray, time waster, but to actually go out to the theater and slap down a lot of money to see it, I, I, 
I can't personally recommend it. I, I'd much, I think everybody would have a much better time with uh, Doctor Strange, or, or <laughs> I don't know if I can say a better time with Hacksaw Ridge, but I kind of maybe feel your payoffs might be a little bit better with those two films. So that's how I felt about Arrival. You guys can leave comments down below uh, about this director's uh, past movies, this film. Um, tell me what you think. That was how I felt about it. So thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. Leave comments down below about Arrival. RMJ Boo Reviews, I'll see you folks soon.